If pro wrestling on NES is a cozy that you placed around your soda can in the 90s, then Tecmo World Wrestling is a state-of-the-art insulated drinking tumbler. And hey, you gotta admit, these things really do keep your beverage warm or cold. But that's how much of an advancement Tecmo World Wrestling is in terms of depth and playability by comparison. Sure, Pro Wrestling laid down a great foundation to build an 8-bit grappler around, and it's a fun game, but Tecmo is that much better. In a short amount of time, the NES came a long way from Tag Team Wrestling and its Ricky Fighters, and whatever the bleeding horseshoe nuggets means of a wrestling game WrestleMania is supposed to be. Graphically speaking, Tecmo looks pretty impressive. The wrestlers, with the exception of some mild modifications to the heads, all share basically the same sprite with various color palette swaps. If I may speak for myself, I'm intimidated by a man who wears periwinkle trunks and sports menacing face paint. While they may not be too diverse in terms of general appearance, it makes up for it with the detailed animation the sprites have during grapples. Holds performed towards or away from the hard camera, be it a figure four, bear hug, power slam pinning combinations, or scorpion deathlocks, they have their own distinct sprites for facing back and forward. That's a pretty cool touch and adds some extra flair to the presentation. I also love the cinematic cutscenes for signature moves that occur when health gets low. What a way to add salt into the wounds. I suppose Tecmo could be credited for incorporating that television-style broadcast that would become synonymous and commonplace with sports games today. The colors don't really complement each other too much on the wrestlers themselves, but the orange and blue are one of my favorite color combinations, so the blue ring canvas and the orange mats on the outside really give the screen a strong presentation. The game's play-by-play -play announcer, Ted Talker, calls the actions with a Mauro Ranallo level enthusiasm. Tope Sumacita! And he's into everything that's happening, until the action grinds to a halt and he just kinda looks bored. The downside is, is that the action is going so fast in the ring, your eyes want to occasionally drift down towards the bottom of the screen to catch what he's saying, but taking your focus off of the in-ring action could land you into a world of hurt. So probably best to have a buddy sitting aside to read the action after a few beers while doing his best Jim Ross or Tony Schiavone impression. This truly captures the atmosphere of a televised wrestling event, and as a kid, it kind of blew my mind. As an adult, I think it's even better. I give the visuals a solid 7 out of 10 because this 8-bit workhorse really puts on a fine performance here. Now, it might be a stretch for me to call Tecmo an underrated company when it comes to making really memorable soundtracks, but in the retro circles that I'm a part of, I seldom see their name come up. I hear the Nintendos, the Segas, the Capcoms, the Konamis, but it seems like the only time people will talk Tecmo is when they're actually hearing it. The music is great. I feel it embodies the hot-blooded spirit and determination of that All Japan slash New Japan wrestler, determined to win that big match and prove that they're the best. The themes vary as you progress through single player, and two player mode has its own theme. These tunes are pretty catchy and stayed stuck into my head for days long after I was recording. That's a fantastic testament to the great composition. If there's anything that pro wrestling has over TWC, the crowd does pop for signature moves, whereas they generally remain silent in this game until the pinfall. The punches and kicks are fairly meaty, and the ring-shattering slams and souplés are a treat to land with a resounding 8-bit crunch. Because I'll be humming these tunes until I play Gradius 3 again, I give the audio an 8 out of 10. Now while there is a good chance that a lot of the matches in Tecmo World Wrestling will resort to a bunch of button matching mayhem, it does offer a little more than that and there can be ebbs and flows to the match. B and A act as your basic punch and kick strikes respectively. There isn't a pure grapple button for certain, so while engaging in elbow and collar tie-ups, both B and A can initiate variations of series of throws by pressing and holding a corresponding direction, depending on the wrestler of course. There's 10 personalities in total, most of them based off of regional and international stars of the era. TWC also incorporates rest holds and submissions, which gradually wear your opponent's health down while replenishing your own. Ground-based submissions like the figure 4 leg lock and the scorpion death lock will have no effect early on, so your opponent can get up and rain holy hell on you if you attempt them early in the match. 
yeah, rest holds add more to your arsenal, but despite your opponent staying down for a longer period of time, nobody sells your damage upon recovery. They just wake right back up and they can throw you around. And then it actually kind of dawned on me why that's the case. Road Warrior Animals on the front of the game. So of course they're not going to sell anything that you throw at them. The only thing the Road Warriors ever sold in their career was merchandise. As the tide of a match can swing drastically, knowing when and where to apply a bear hug or an abdominal stretch to recharge yourself is critical. Before every match, you have the option to increase your power through squats, sit-ups, push-ups, and a giant sumo sitting on your back. Yeah, you know, because that's what you do. I don't believe that these affect any particular parameters, but hey, they exist. Control-wise, it's very easy to pick up and play. It's a pretty challenging game and a pretty fun two-player one. For my money, the most polished grappler on the NES. With the exception of a fiery burn, your thumbs and forearms will endure from all the button mashing to level up, and grappling for leverage, and breaking submission holds. It's a faster, more cohesive throwdown in the squared circle. The controls get a more than respectable 7 out of 10. That score would be higher, but my hands and forearms were burning after a while, and I had to take a couple of breaks in between recording sessions. And when the matches get harder, it's, it just becomes a little too common. So, yeah, that's, that's aggravating. Tecmo World Wrestling is a fine game, and it's worthy of any NES collection, or if you just want to collect retro wrestling games. I give it a solid 7 out of 10. That number would be higher, but as I mentioned before, the hands and the forearms do start to burn after a while, and I don't recommend playing it for a long time, especially if you're doing the single-player stretch, you'll probably take a break or something. But isn't it kind of funny that the World Wrestling Federation NES games are not really all that good, but games like this are way more entertaining? You would think that Vince's company would produce a great wrestling game. Ooh, yeah, maybe I want to turn on some WrestleMania Challenge, or regular WrestleMania with those clunky controls and lousy hit detection. I'd rather be caught dead than playing those games, and I...